Hey, this is Digital by Computing, and today we're gonna be talking about my password recommendations, my best IT practice, best practice for setting up a password. So my name is Emilio, and today we are talking about passwords. What sort of passwords you should be using, how you should be storing them, and some good practices, good things that you should be following around your password management. Now in, an, in another video that I've got on my channel, we talked about the sorts of passwords that you should be using, right? So don't be using simple passwords like admin, or password, or one, two, three, four, five, six, or let me in, don't use stuff like that. Don't use simple passwords that are just a single name, a your name, your first name, your surname. Uh, don't be using that sort of stuff. So in an earlier video, we really talked about the summary of um, using um, you know, an uppercase, lowercase, having a number, having a special character, having the password at least eight characters long, and changing the password often enough. Today we're gonna to talk about a little bit more in depth around some IT best practices or some best practices around passwords in general. So in an early video, we did talk about not using common words. Um, the thing with this is um, common words that, that you know, people who want to get into a, uh, into a system, if they want to be able to attack you, if they want to be able to log into one of your accounts, into your Facebook, into your Google, whatever it may be, they're gonna be using what's called dictionary attacks. So they can do brute force attacks against a list of already predetermined, pre-found um, passwords, most commonly used passwords, as well as dictionary words. And they're just gonna be trying that, and if they want to get in, they will get in eventually if you're using a simple word. Now the other thing that you should not be doing is using your name, your first name, or your surname in your password. If somebody knows your first name or your surname, that could be used to construct, or somebody could construct, a password out of that to be able to try to get in to a service that you use. So what a lot of people don't want to do is they don't want to now go after watching this video, I have to go and find, figure out all of these new passwords and make it very complicated and do all this sort of stuff. You know, a lot of the time, it's as simple as combining passwords together. It's a lot more secure to have two passwords become one password. So let's say you've got a really, you know, interesting password here, you know, you use this account all the time and it's a password of, I don't know, admin1969 hash. Um, and you think, well, that's not strong enough. It probably isn't. Um, but then you've got another password of password 339 dollar dollar, all right? You combine those two together into one big password, you've automatically just strengthened your password itself. Something that is generally recommended is not to use the same passwords at work than at home. Or the same password that you're using at home at work. Keep your company, your professional life, and your personal life separate. Um, you've got to realize that your business, generally a business, is more under scrutiny, is more under attack um, from the hacker community than your personal account. You may not be anybody um, known outside of work. So nobody's gonna to wanna to maybe target you directly, but they want to target a business that contains a lot of financial information, contains money, contains you know uh, information about products that have been released, whatever it may be. So if your company gets attacked and they get access to your company and they get access to the passwords that are saved in there, that could contain a password that you use at home and then it comes into your home and then they can get access to your personal stuff. So try to keep your company and your personal separate. And don't reuse a password. If you've used a password once, never use that password again. So when you have to go and reset your password, don't reset that password to the same thing. Even further to that, is if you have the password of uh, I love you one, two, three, don't change that password to I love you one, two, four. And then the next time, I love you one, two, five. Change it completely, make it something completely obscure, not even related to the same password that you've used previously. Now here's something that uh, people are going to laugh because I'm sure we've all done it. I've done it in the past, I'm sure you've done it, I'm sure you know people that you work with, even at home that have done it. But do not write your password down on a piece of paper. Do not write your password down on a sticky note. Do not share your password with anybody. That is your password. You've got no idea. Me being in, in the IT field, I, I work with a lot of different businesses. I've gone to a lot of, from C-level executives 
all the way down to people in the mail room, no offense to people in the mail room, um, who have got their passwords stuck on sticky notes on their screen for anybody to see. Anybody can go in and find their password. A contractor walks in from the street, they get a consultant in, they get the cleaners at night, they're walking around, oh look, they've got the passwords to the CEO of a business. Do not write your password down anywhere. Do not keep a log of passwords in a business anywhere. Do not write this stuff down that is easily accessible by anybody. So along the same lines of sharing passwords, it's never a good idea to send a password over email, over SMS, or anything like that, along with the username at the same time. So here's a good example. Um, I've rang up my wife and said, hey, honey, I need, um, can you throw me there? I've forgotten the username and the password for our, for our bank. Can you please text it to me? And she'll go ahead and she'll text you, or oh, here's the username and here's the password, bam. It's just sent through uh, your text machine, right? Um, not a good practice to get into. Now, it's very unlikely that that is gonna be monitored, but it can be, it can be. Uh, if it's sent over email, it can be intercepted. And then somebody who's intercepted this already now knows it's your bank password, Oh, sorry, it's, your, it's, it's for a bank, and here is the username and the password, all in the one simple, single medium, right? By email, by text message, whatever it may be, or even by instant messaging, by, over chat. You've now got access to all the information that you need to be able to get in. So if you do need to send or share passwords or username to somebody, send it in two different forms. Perhaps send a email with the login, and then send a SMS with the password or call up somebody and tell them, hey, this is the password over the phone and I will send you an SMS with the email address or with the username. Don't have them all in the one system. Now we'll talk a little bit about what's called uh, multi-factor authentication. So on top of just a password, you can also set it so that it sends you an SMS code to be able to approve, you know, you've got a password and an SMS code to be able to log in or a password and a private key, like a little special key that you save somewhere on a USB hard drive or something. So a good example would be Facebook. A lot of people don't realize that you can set up MFA, multi-factor authentication, on Facebook. So that when you log into Facebook and you put in your username and your password and you press login, it then directs you to another page to ask you for a second mode of authentication. That could be via a code that is sent to your phone, via an authenticator app on your phone. You've got, for example, Google Authenticator, which is a program you can download off, um, off an app store uh, onto your phone, which gives you a code, or it could send you a code to your email as well to be able to log in to your Facebook account. And this service, this MFA, is available across a lot of other services. So getting into the good practice of every account that you create, set it up with a two-factor authentication mode enabled by default. So what this does is regardless of if a hacker or if somebody gets access to your password, they will not be able to log in because they don't have access to the second mode second authentication mode, right? They're gonna to try to log in with a password, whatever it may be, you're gonna click login, and then it's gonna send an SMS to your mobile phone. You own, you have the mobile phone with you. So you will not be able to, um, well, they will not be able to get the code from your phone because it's sent to your phone, so they will not be able to log in. Good practice to get into. Now, something that um, can be a challenge to hear is uh, using different passwords for everything. Um, it can be annoying. I totally understand that it can be annoying to have a different password for every single system. But listen, if you've got one password or even a, you know, let's say you've got a combination of four or five passwords, you think they're very, very hard. But those five passwords have logged into a hundred different services. Wherever you've created an account for anything, you've potentially created a password, maybe out of those that pool of five passwords that you've got. If any of those accounts, any of these accounts, have been compromised in the past, somebody potentially has access of this password and they could use this. If somebody wanted to target you for whatever reason it may be, they could use that. So get into a good practice of having a different password for every system. Now, you could think, well, how am I supposed to do that? How am I supposed to remember this? It's, it's crazy, I've only, I have enough, enough trouble remembering these five passwords. 
But what you can do is you can have what's called password management system. So you can actually have a tool, a software package, even a cloud version, you know, a, a, a password management tool that's out on the internet that essentially stores your passwords. A nice free tool that you can use to install at home is a tool called KeePass. Essentially, it's just a file, just a repository. Think of it such as a you know, file explorer on your Windows computer. You open it up and you've got all your files listed. You've got folders and files and they're all in the nicely structured order. Essentially, it's like that, but for password management. Whether you use KeePass or something else, the structure is very much the same. You could have a combination. You could have banking, you could have emails, you could have um, you know, uh, social media all of these folders and then within each of these you then got all of your banks listed with your um, you know with your username with your bank number and with the password in there and that is all um, encrypted and this file this key pass file or this system whatever other system you're using around password management is encrypted so this itself has a password has like a master password on it so that you need to know what this master password is to be able to get into your file to be able to get all of your passwords. So if you are going in and you're creating a different password for every single system or every service that you use, you just save it into there and you're good to go. You could potentially, as I said, have it in the cloud, have it in a nice paid cloud offering around password management and then it's secure and it's there and it's always accessible from any device, from anywhere in the world, your entire password repository, making sure that that is secure enough that only you know how to get into this password system. So there you have it. That is my summary on password best practice. Putting this stuff into place will ensure that your passwords are more secure. Make sure that your systems and services that you use are more secure. And look, at the end of the day, not every system um, is going to get compromised. And even putting these things into practice may not 100% um, secure you from uh, the prying eyes that be, but it will help. It help, will help you to mitigate uh, this risk of uh, you know, somebody getting in via a password that is simple and you know, not using very good practice. So there is my summary. I would love it if you commented below. Let me know what you think. Let me know if there are suggestions or if you think that something that I said is not right, let's have a chat about it. And I would love it if you also subscribe to uh, Digital by Computing and like this video as well. And uh, I've got a whole bunch of other videos around technology and the IT space in general that uh, hopefully you enjoy. If you want to see more of this, let me know as well. And we'll see you next time.